at NTV. Welcome back to Still Watching Morning at NTV. I'm Arnold Segawa. And uh, let's uh, just shift gear. It's just 25 minutes past uh, 8 a.m. And uh, move some uh, uh, towards, I think, uh, some banking uh, news, or uh, should I say, um, what the spectrum actually looks like uh, come the pandemic. Uh, what does uh, uh, banking and the finance space look like in the wake of a global pandemic like this, especially uh, for regions like Sub-Saharan Africa and, of course, East Africa in particular? Um, arguably, the best people to talk to are uh, a bank that's in over five countries, over 100 uh, branches and uh, so many ATMs. If we were to count those, that might take a minute. Uh, joining me now to talk about uh, this particular uh, conversation is uh, the uh, M uh, CEO, should I say, of uh, NCBA, Mr. Ndegwa. Sir, many thanks for making time to speak to us. Thank you so much for M having Usually me. there's a tough divide whether or not to go with CEO or MD. I don't know which one you prefer. I see some people saying CEO and managing director. Oh, yes. Just to be safe. That is a fancy title. Yeah, that's a cool, eh? It, 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 cool. it explains cool. the fancy jacket. I oh, think. thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, thanks for having me on show. So, so how hard was it for you to uh, actually sit down and iron out the technicalities of CBA mm -hmm. and NC? Uh, usually, well, when it comes to the states, mm -hmm. there's uh, the, the Securities and Exchange Commission. There's, yeah. You know, there's so many, especially when some of these banks are listed, you yeah. know, on the stock exchange. Yeah. Um, uh, did, did that keep you up on a scale of one to ten? How bad? No, I, I, great. I mean, great. Um, first of all, I just want to, you know, to thank you for, for you know, for letting me just, be, you know, to be here with you. Mm. But let's just do, let's take a few steps back and just look at the merger. Um, this merger was announced in December 2018. All right, at our, at our head office. Right. Um, NC, uh, NC Uganda's parent was NIC, NIC Group, which is quoted in the stock exchange. So, of course, you're right about that. Mm. And CB, on the other hand, was a privately owned company, but at group level, um, uh, uh, it was announced in December 2018, more than a year ago. Mm. April 2019, shareholders come and say, you know what, this transaction is approved. And those are steps that must be, s that must be done, especially for a quoted company, yep. a listed company. Um, then October 2019, the merger in, uh, in Kenya is concluded, and s October 1, NCBA at group level, you know, uh, you know, starts operating. In Uganda specifically, we got a letter of no objection in May this year. All right? It That's took us a letter of no, no objection. objection. And that yeah. basically is a letter from Bank of Uganda, yeah. our regulator, saying, guys, go ahead and integrate. All right, mm. and that's an important step in the whole, you know, in the whole conversation. Then at that point is when you then bring your systems together, have your databases together, and ensure that your customers are informed about what you're doing. All right, June the fifteenth, we get we concluded our, our amalgamation and we got our banking license. Now the banking license then allows us to trade as NCBA Bank Uganda Limited. So really, that's when we were born as a bank. Right. <coughs> if uh, we're to uh, fast forward this, because mm -hmm. uh, for me, my understanding mm -hmm. was uh, if you ought to look at NC, mm -hmm. uh, they had a bit of a different approach. Mm -hmm. uh, they were to maybe target positioned in a different way. Obviously, yeah. when you ought to look at the banking space, there's uh, b b uh, a positioning, the segmentation, yeah. just, just like any uh, business, Correct. right? Correct. Um, give me a sense of if you ought to look at CBA, mm -hmm. which had a more retail kind of approach, mm -hmm. NC not so much mm -hmm. looking at, uh, you know, the heavy uh, investment banking. How then do you merge the two? And ultimately, what is the product? Is it gotcha. kind of like uh, a sandwich and meet me in the middle? <laughs> That's a fantastic point. Um, first, I think why you're asking why the merger? Mm. And what does it, this mean for the market? Ultimately, yes, what does it product? mean for the market? What at at the product level, mm. at the product level. When you look at both banks, both banks were strong in difference, on, on, you know, you know, different uh, different aspects. Mm. NC was very strong on asset finance and bank uh, bank assurance. All right, yeah. NC had grown to be one of the leading banks in Uganda in providing asset finance solution. CBA a ma massive gap that we have on that front actually. Yes. Yeah. and then on the other side we have CBA. CBA is high 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 on on technology. All right. Uh, CBA has this partnership with MTN to provide more cash, mm. the solution that allows our customers to borrow and to save on their phone. Seven million customers on right. this particular platform, which is even bigger than the entire banking uh, sector in Uganda. Uh, CBA also has a private banking product. 
high-end retail, all mm -hmm. right? Both banks also had um, corporate banking, all right? But when you put these two together, you then get a more compelling product suite. You then get more, a wider range of products for our service, I mean, for our customers under one roof. Then to superimpose that, you then have a bigger team who are then able to face our customers, who are able to face the market and provide an excellent delivery to our customers. Uh, let's uh, try and get into the figures mm -hmm. because uh, I, was, I was actually looking at some of the financials between uh, 2018 and 2019. Yes. Uh, December 2019, total assets for CBA 23% to uh, 248 billion. Correct. Uh, some losses actually of yes. about 10.4. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's on the profit, uh, well, uh, the profit position. Correct. And C, on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, total bank assets increased 5.9% to 289 billion, mm -hmm. this coming from 273 billion. Uh, we are now away from the products. Yes. If we were to talk bottom line, mm -hmm. we are seeing two banks that uh, are not having the same position per se. Mm -hmm. So you coming in then, mm -hmm. how do you, well, obviously you're not going to wake up and fire everyone from, <laughs> from, from the uh, loss making side. Yes. What then do you do? Because mm -hmm. we saw another uh, takeover of sorts of another bank mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, mm -hmm. and it, it, wasn't, it was quite grim mm -hmm. for the other guys, mm -hmm. you know, who were not doing so well. Mm -hmm. um, so how do, you, how do you then deal with the human capital mm -hmm. at that particular, do you copy and paste what is working on the other bank and mm -hmm. paste it here? Mm -hmm. let, me talk about, let, me talk the, let me talk about the numbers. What do the numbers represent? Um, before a merger, there are some things that you need to do to be able to cross over into a merger from an accounting perspective. When you look at our merger, what is really happening is that the transaction was a share swap. We just change shares. Mm. And when you have a share swap, it's a friendly merger. So it is people with like mind coming together to form a larger, more efficient organization to better serve our customers because you've got a more compelling product suite under one roof. Mm. You're then creating a stronger bank with a stronger balance sheet. Because you know, the essence of lending is ability to collect deposits from customers, all right? And also it's a percentage of your capital base. So the size of your capital is important. Today we've got a capital base of 84 billion Uganda shillings. Yeah. We've got a total asset of 550 billion just in Uganda. And that's a massive investment. What does that do for our customers? It means that today I can be able to do a transaction of up to $3 million in Uganda. I do not have to then syndicate this transaction with someone else. Now, I'll take you to the step of that you talked about. Before the merger, we were smaller banks. Now, we are a mid-tier bank. We are 15th in the market, and our aspirations is to grow to a top 10 bank. So this merger is about growth for us. You talked about staff. Staff. You talked about loss making, profit making. But when you look at the financials of the ex -CB CBA, mm. what drove that loss? Two things, just two things. All right. One, we had to write off our deferred tax. And deferred tax is just an asset that you accumulate, all right, which you then use in future for tax planning. Uh, obviously, uh, ju just maybe for some of our viewers who yes. might not be uh, as accounting savvy, uh, yes. there's two things here that come to play. One is a deferred tax asset, another yes. could be a deferred tax liability. liability. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's the asset, you could actually just move it forward yes. uh, to the next financial year. Correct. Uh, yeah, ju just uh, for some of our viewers. I'll explain that. I mean, I mean that, that's easy. It could be a, uh, for on our side, it was a deferred tax asset, mm. all right, because the bank had not reported profitability but for tax planning what you then do you then put an amount it's like putting an amount in a bank and then using it on a rainy day so it's an asset that you keep mm. and it's just to manage your your, your you know your uh, p l but at the same time you then you still pay your taxes all right but you're keeping this amount like a provision you're keeping it there all right so of course then the merger remember i talked about it was, it was a share swap when you then do a share swap there has to be one bank or one, en one entity that, you know, in accounting that survives. So we then bo move the books from one, from CBA, into NC. So NC, we change the names from NC to NCBA, to have NCBA Bank Uganda Limited. Therefore, on the CBA side, we then had to do all these write-offs because we are then moving only the key aspects of, of uh, I would say, of the balance sheet across mm. to the other side, all right? And therefore, 
For that then reason, we got about 7 billion of our deferred tax, all right? And of course, we then had to look at our, uh, our, our repositioning of our debtor's position or our loan book and just say, look, let's be aggressive, let's have more provisions so that in future, these items then reverse back as profits. That's really what it was about. So it was about more managing, being prudent, and following the accounting standards to be able to have a merger that would then allow us to grow into the future. But at the end of the day, this is a fantastic opportunity for us as a bank to grow. This is just the first step. The first step is come together. Come together, spend enough time, look at your systems with your customer in mind to be able to have a better solution to them, to have more compelling um, products and services. Because when you look, look, look at the asset finance, bank assurance on one side, you have the digital banking on the other side, you then have the private banking and the corporate banking super, super lane, then you have this organization working in Uganda. You know what you're doing? You're talking to the Ugandan public very positively. I'm saying I can be able to have an asset finance to an SME, to an individual. Look at our economy. Our economy is pretty much run by SME. <laughs> All the guys <laughs> need assets, correct? Sure. Remember what our president is saying. president is saying, let's manufacture in Uganda. Let's add value. To manufacture and add value in Uganda, what do you need? You need assets. I am the right bank for you. Uh, uh, Anthony, let's uh, talk more on the policy side. Um, we've seen uh, Bank of Uganda come out and uh, cut the lending rate, the, the central bank rate, uh, definitely the repo. And you do get the sense that at this particular time, we might be, a pr this is uh, very debatable. Mm -hmm. uh, I've argued with a few guys, some do not agree, mm -hmm. um, whether or not we might be approaching the effective lower bound mm -hmm. uh, where uh, if we continue in this particular direction, monetary mm -hmm. policy-wise, it uh, will not have any effect ultimately uh, when it comes to uh, kick-starting the economy. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, mm -hmm. as someone who's in the commercial space mm -hmm. and, you, and you know firsthand, mm -hmm. Do you feel the, the Bank of Uganda has done enough mm -hmm. with its uh, tools mm -hmm. to actually address um, the, 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 the issues around the pandemic as it stands? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. Um, when you look at the pandemic, the pandemic has had significant impact globally, mm. negatively on the economies, including Uganda. In Uganda, we've had significant impact on the supply side, you know, you have clients who are not able to get their goods in just because China is closed. <laughs> You've got the road infrastructure, logistical, all packed up. So pff, delay in on the service side. On the demand side, again, significant shocks. So then you have the Bank of Uganda coming in and say, these are the issues that I'm dealing with. I've got a supply side shock which means that my manufacturers cannot bring in product to sell. Anthony, you're, you're getting me very excited. When I hear things like supply-side shocks, <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting very excited. I'm getting very excited. Please, please, go on. So, 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 so and, 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 and I want to kind of paint this picture. Because in a broad In a broad manner. way, because yeah. I, want to put, I want to put the government and the Bank of Uganda in the middle of all this. That's really where I'm coming from. So I have on one side, you've got supply side. So you have, a, you have a manufacturer, because then you have Bank of Uganda coming in to support the economy. Really, that's where we're looking at. But both sides of the economy, or both sides of, of, of the it's spectrum. It's cushioning. It's cushioning. Uh, yeah, it's cushioning. We are falling. Yes. It's cushioning. It's, it's holding. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. All right. so, so you have both sides. And it's important to realize that there's a demand side. So why? Because look at, you know, with social distancing, the lockdown, th that means that the retail, the SME sector has actually been shut down. That's what it means. All right. First, uh, Anthony, let's first pause yes. right there because yes. uh, you you approached it from uh, I've I've never really been such a huge uh, proponent of uh, supply side economics. Yes. Uh, but I love that you started that way. I'm yes. sure you were going to come on this other side. Yes. But before uh, you come back to the demand side, yes. If you're going to go with the supply side, yeah. I want you then to bring in the fiscus. You know, yes. uh, because if we were to look at expenditure, the fiscal side of things, spending, tax cuts. Are those then enough? And that's what I'm looking at. Okay. And I want to look at both sides because mm. once you look at both sides, you then bring in tax collections because tax is t picks from both sides, mm. correct? Mm. You then look at the cushion and how, because then we want to, want to evaluate the cushion. So because the, the entire sector has been impacted, it then means one, lower tax collections. Mm -hmm. A big component of our taxes coming on the input side, on the supply side. Because when you bring in a product, you then have the VATs, the import uh, duties, et cetera. When you sell, you have the, the VATs, et cetera. 
But if you do have a supply side shock, it simply means that it's, you're shutting down a significant part of income generation for a government. So then you look at Bank of Uganda and say, what is then Bank of Uganda doing? Bank of Uganda is then looking at cushioning the entrepreneur, the organizations, the economy by telling the banks and uh, bringing in, I mean, there's a paper that was, was actually issued in April and I this was a COVID relief, um, uh, COVID relief uh, measures where Bank of Uganda comes and says, as banks, you should help businesses mm -hmm. proactively, all right, proactively, and when clients approach you, please accommodate them. How are you going to accommodate them? One of the ways that they've allowed us is restructuring, extending their facilities. Because uh, uh, Anthony, before we get, get into the restructuring, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate yes, here yes. because you are talking about uh, this paper that was put out by the Bank of Uganda. Correct. I, 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 I hear you. Yes. I hear you. Yes. But you as the commercial bank, yes. your capital requirements yes. have not been cut. Correct. So how are you going to help uh, the, the Arnold out there who mm -hmm. needs a loan mm -hmm. if you still need to hold on to as much cash mm -hmm. as you did mm -hmm. a year ago, the Correct. 25 billion. Correct. So capital adequacy is still where it was. Correct. Capital requirements Correct. are still where they That's are. That's true. Your ratios are still where they're supposed to Correct. be. You're not changing that as Correct. the regulator. Correct. But then you want me to help uh, and lend more, more money. Are you being helped? I am being helped. When you look at the entire economy, I look you're being a nice guy. I am not being a nice guy. You're being Let, a nice let's guy. Let's look at the numbers. Let's go at the numbers. Let's uh -huh. go at the numbers. What are the numbers showing? Interest rates on the T bill has come down. Correct. Yeah, but in the that has a long uh, a monetary transmission period. It has. You cannot just cut down the repo and expect it to trickle down in two months. But but I, from your perspective, you can always do more. Government can always do more. Cut the, can the, they always cut the requirement. More? Cut they, the capital requirement. They can always do more. You see, capital requirement is one of those very sensitive aspects because it's about strength of a bank. It's about ability to support. So by cutting them down, you're not necessarily helping the bank. I want to hear this. You're not necessarily helping. Because remember, it's a risk. It's a risk game. It's about does the bank have sufficient strength to be able to support clients? At the end of the day, when you look at the banking model, the banking model is a very simple model. It's Are a model. Fractional it's, reserve a very banking. it's a very small, very simple. It's money on one side with people who have excess who need to be protected. Correct? Okay. This money doesn't belong to us. These guys need to be protected. This money is then being lent to another group of uh, people who need money, all right? So the bank is an intermediary. The bank needs to be, there needs to be checks and balances in this. And that's what Bank of Uganda is doing. I, I hear you. Yes. Uh, okay, if we were to go into the fractional reserve banking, mm -hmm. which would basically be, uh, if, if Anthony is uh, uh, coming to deposit maybe uh, 7,000 Uganda shillings, yes. 1,000 of that would be lent to the next person, and exactly. another 1,000, and another 1,000, and another 1,000, exactly. creating the multiplier effect. Uh -huh. And then that leaves me wondering, at a time like this, mm -hmm. isn't it time for us to get radical? Mm -hmm. Because if we are at 25 billion, I'm, I'm really staying on this matter mm -hmm. uh, for capital requirements, mm -hmm. we are at 25 billion. Mm -hmm. How about you cut it down by, let's say, 20 billion and mm -hmm. say that the 5 billion, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking outside the box here, mm -hmm. and say the 5 billion has to be lent out and there has to be a strict mandate to mm -hmm. show that this money has been lent out mm -hmm. in this particular time. Mm -hmm. Give or take uh, a, a customer div uh, de de deposit fund of sorts to mm -hmm. protect against the five billion mm -hmm. just to make sure that mm -hmm. there's lending happening. Mm -hmm. You know, there are different ways of, I would say, peeling an onion, I guess. I mean, as you peel an onion, you see oh, options. There are many, many, many options. There are very many options, all right? I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. But how about looking at it from another perspective? Let's look at the entire system and say, let's make the entire system efficient, all right? Because banking is not just about capital uh, requirements. It's not about interest rate. It's about creating efficiencies across. How about looking at the different components in the, in the supply chain or the value chain and say, one of the aspects is one, litigation. That's one aspect. Mm. Clients are not able to pay, you go into a litigation, all right? Let's look at that process and say, let's make it efficient. All right? Because the moment, the moment you make it efficient, then you're then saying you're unlocking money. Mm. You're unlocking money back into the system. Let's look at availability of information of borrowers, in, uh, the ID. Let's have an integration and have a seamless integration. All right? Therefore, I'm able to then lend you quicker. All these things. Let's also look at, let's also look at um, um, laws around, uh, can I say, and really that's there. You know, we're, we're talking about innovation. Let's use innovation. Let banks come in and innovate more. 
Mm. Right? Let banks innovate. What are you then doing? You're then creating a larger economy or a larger banking uh, uh, environment. And the moment it's a bigger cake, we all benefit. All right? It's not for us as banks to point fingers to Bank of Uganda and say, I want you to do more. I think the first thing, there's a song that Michael Jackson sang. The Man, man in, in the Mirror. mirror. <laughs> man in the Mirror. You know that song. You start, yes. when you look at the mirror, you see yourself. Right. Correct? Ask yourself, what have I done? What has NCBA done? NCBA has gone out and produced and, 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 and innovated. Um, Mokash. Mokash has 7 million customers in Uganda. 7 million customers is more than the entire banking sector. The entire banking sector in Uganda is about maybe 5 to 6 million. One product I can borrow on my phone. I've opened up the market. I'm, I'm having financial inclusion. I think we need to start thinking that way. We need to have a borderless bank. Uh, but, but, but Anthony, you forget that uh, about one of the roles of uh, someone like me who's yes. sitting in this chair yes. is uh, basically to criticize. Of course, and, uh, of course. and you're doing your job. And point fingers. Yes. You know, of obviously, they, have, they, they cannot be dumbfounded. Yes. It has to uh, uh, be backed by something. Yeah. Um, so uh, don't get me wrong. Yes. I did no, not no, mean worry. to uh, criticize no. the regulator yeah. in any way. But yeah, uh, yeah you have all the right responses. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to ask you maybe the other thing would be about uh, in this particular time how are you positioning yourselves to to see yourselves to handle the uh, some non-performing loans because this is definitely an elephant in the room correct, correct. Uh, people haven't been working correct. Um, if you're looking at uh, the, the retail space if, I mean you just mentioned the supply side uh, China which is the global uh, value chain yeah. uh, is, is down yeah. how then do you plan to handle the NPLs at this particular time? Very briefly. One, um, discuss with customers and appreciate the challenge. That's number one. Appreciate how you can be able to push this debt. You need to restructure. You need to restructure. I think the first thing is, can we restructure this? Can we push the loan repayments mm. to a point in time to give cushion mm. to our customers? That's the first thing. Number two, sit with our customers and understand their challenges. Some of the clients don't really need a restructure. If you look at people who are in some sectors, like the building sector and some of the core sectors that have continued to operate, they may need your support. Others, on the other hand, you have projects. We've got some projects which we are still financing today, all right, during COVID. Mm. But it's because we have then appreciated the bigger picture and the fact that these projects are not impacted by the pandemic, right. all right? So there are pockets of opportunities. and. They are performing loans, but they're also non-performing loans. But the performing loans does not mean that you're a bad person. No. You're reacting to the current situation. Right. So we want to partner with you. Have this deferred, these payments deferred, the loan repayments. Give them a grace period. Three months, six months. All right? Allow them to breathe. All right? And as things, the economy starts normalizing, you then come back and then start picking up money, even if it's on an incremental basis. Right. The idea here is to uh, ensure that our customers are able to weather these difficult storm. That's the idea. Anthony, many thanks for making time to speak to us. Uh, uh, you've been uh, listening to uh, Anthony Ndegwa, mm -hmm. who is the CEO of Stroke MD of uh, the, <laughs> N, the newly uh, formed NCBA, mm -hmm. just uh, uh, touching on uh, all these particular matters. Anthony, many thanks again. Um, uh, let's uh, head over to the NRM headquarters uh, to uh, cross over to uh, Ali Mifule, who is uh, standing by. Uh, Ali, I understand